The truth sets you free. With the world's fastest reader, Howard Steven Berg. Hi everyone, Howard Berg, world's fastest reader. Welcome to another show. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I have a really special guest. The guy is an absolute blast. He's a genius in art. We're going to have fun. But before we do, I want to thank our sponsor, Hillcrest Baptist Church Sunday School. It's at 265 West Pleasant Run Road, Cedar Hill, Texas. You can call them at 972-227-6453. And, of course, next slide, our favorite Sunday school teacher, Dr. Gloria Cowan, in A Journey Through the Bible. She does in-depth in study of books of the Bible, searching for theological meaning with practical application for daily living. And she provides teacher notes with scripture. So... A wonderful opportunity to get to a wonderful class. It's not just for kids. This is for adults as well. So please write that down and consider going to one of the classes. Thank you. Well, as always, I'd like to give you a tip. My last show, I showed you the five things you need to learn to be able to master any subject, but I didn't show you how to learn them. This time, I'll show you how to learn the five things. You put the first graphic up. I like to use five, four by five or four by six or five or, four, or three by five index cards. And I write on one side the word and the other side the definition. On one side the name, the other side what they did. On one side the number, date, statistic, or formula, the other side what it means and how you use it. On one side are the headings, the other side are the five main ideas. On one side is a question and the other side is an answer. So let's see how that works. Can you go to the next slide? You're learning Spanish. What's going to be on the other side of a card that says hola? Next slide. Hello. Next slide, please. You're learning biology. What's an Agilius Phoenicius? Next slide. A red-winged blackbird. And yes, that's how I learned it. Next slide. What's the atomic weight of zinc? And you turn it over and it's 65.37. So we can learn almost anything using the cards, but there's a special way to do it, and I'm going to show you how. Imagine you don't get it right. Imagine you make a mistake. Well, how can you fix it? You ever tried writing something down, spelling it, and you found it difficult? We're kind of telling a funny spelling story before we started the show. Uh, Murray's name would have an A in it, but his father spelled it without the A. And we're like, how did he get his father's name wrong? But he did it phonetically. It's just a spelling mistake. And it's common. It's very common. Because when we read, we read words. But when we write, we write letters. And so when you're trying to remember how to spell something without writing it down, it can be very challenging. But when we write it, it's one letter at a time. So when you're looking at the card, if you get it right, you got it right, you don't need to do it. But when you get it wrong, put it on a do-over pile, get a pad, and write it out correctly 25 times while saying it aloud. Let me tell you why. Repetition is an important part of learning. Repetition is an important part of learning. Repetition is a very important part of learning. Writing it is using the part of your brain that moves the pen. Speaking uses your lips, tongue, and vocal cords. And you're hearing the word spoken aloud, and you're seeing it. When most of us try to learn, we look in a book, we look at what's there, and we try to remember it just by looking. That's only one sense. Does it make sense? The more senses we use, the faster we learn, and the easier we remember. So any card you got wrong, write it out 25 times, saying it aloud. Now, you finish the deck, whatever you got wrong, you reshuffle and do it again. And if you get any wrong the second time, you do it again and again and again to get every card right. Once a week, do all of the cards since the beginning of your project, so you don't forget where you started. But every day, just put in the new information. And if you follow this strategy, the way I laid it out, you'll quickly learn those five key things, the new words, the names, numbers, dates, statistics, the main ideas, and questions and answers in a fraction of the time. How do I know? I took six science courses a term with two labs and worked three jobs and was able to use this to get it done quickly and easily. It'll work for you and work for your kids. And speaking of kids and having fun. We got Murray. Murray's my buddy. He's a brilliant artist. And why don't you tell him a little about your, your background in art to get started so people know what you've done and where okay. you've worked. Some amazing stories. 
I have a kind of interesting background. I'm one of the few people that's actually born in Hollywood. Hollywood Press Hospital, I went to Hollywood High. Uh, I got in trouble in school because I like to draw. And they've proven nowadays doodling helps your memory. So in classes, I would doodle notes, but I would draw like hands holding a book, writing the notes in it. And I'd get in trouble from the teachers. You're drawing in class. And I never forgotten my one biology teacher. She came over and yelled at me, and I, she said, you don't remember anything. And I quoted the last half hour lecture to her verbatim because it helped my memory. And then uh, the only, I wasn't that popular in school except when I draw pretty girls. So I would come to school with drawings of pretty girls, and then everybody thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but my family was very, very poor. Although I lived in Hollywood, I lived in the poor section where the people that worked in the studios and all were. So in high school, in the last year, I started working to help support our family. And I did a little studio across from Capitol Records. And I would do paste up books and ads and catalogs and stuff like that. And that's how I got started. And then uh, down the street was Wallach's Music City, which is very famous. And uh, I went, you know, there was Hollywood Boulevard where I'd walk every day to get to work. And I just started out like that, doing the basics. Uh, I did something which at the time everybody said was a bad mistake. I became a jack of all trades. I'm not a master of anything, but I figured I might as well learn as much as I could. Uh, so as the industry changed, I was always a step ahead in the standpoint of I didn't just do one thing. Like some people were just brilliant letterers, or some people could do this, or they could do that. I could do a little bit of everything. So as things changed, for me it was an advantage because somebody say, well, you can do this. And I go, sure I can. I go, oh my god, figure out how to do that. And uh, <laughs> So I would. And then the other thing I did that was a little different, I tried to use good business sense uh, with art. And a lot of artists come out and think, I'm just an artist. And they don't realize they have to understand art. And they have to understand it's also a business. So uh, much of what Howie said as far as learning, I'd like to reinforce that. When I teach art, I ask people, what's the one problem you have? And I want you to write it down and stick it on the back of your canvas. And every 20 minutes, stop what you're doing turn the canvas over and see if you're still doing the same thing. And then if you're going to do something in class, uh, or I'm working with you, if you're going to mix orange, say the color, I'm mixing orange. Because you're doing the same kind of thing. You're starting to help your body work and think. And uh, I also make you do the same thing over and over again. So <laughs> you say, well, it's not fair. Well, you want to be able to practice until it makes sense. And if you have, there's some things that are simple steps that they don't teach anymore in art schools. They used to teach, but in the 50s and all, when abstract art came in, they stopped teaching some principles. So for example, I can teach anybody to draw a perfect circle, perfect circle in less than 20 seconds. And they go, well, I, I can't. Well, the problem is you draw a circle not from here, but from your shoulder. This is a ball joint. And you'll notice my hand's making a circle. So if you draw from here, you can make a perfect circle in seconds. The other thing, people go, I can't draw a straight line. I can do the same thing. If you take your hand with a pencil and just go straight across, drawing from here, from the shoulder, see how straight my hand is? And the same thing, I can drop it. So these are principles they used to know, but they've stopped over wow. the years. Well, you've worked with, Carl, you've worked with uh, Lucas, <coughs> and you've worked with Disney. I think you brought a picture of some of what you did with, with Star Wars. It's down there. Well, or? yeah, I'm, since this older guy, I worked on a few projects you may have heard of. This is one somebody has seen before. So I did this album cover for that. And here's the inside and all the pages and the books and everything had to be designed. And then I did display stores. So in the stores, uh, my grandson has it now. I have a six foot high cutout of Darth Vader that I designed. And so he was able to go to his school and do a report on Star Wars oh, and cool. he had Darth Vader, <laughs> think you're a good boy. <laughs> and you have that wonderful thing down there. Can you tell and then us about I'm gonna, this? I'm going to show you this. This is this amazing. Is, this is before computers. When they used to print things, this is a pre-proof of the album cover. And we would run these, and then if you came up close, you'll see correction marks that came from the studios, things they wanted to fix from Lucas Studios. But what this was is all normal printing is done in four colors. It's done in yellow, then the next ink is magenta, so there's the two colors mixed. Then the third color is a cyan, it's a light blue, this sticks. 
So you put the light blue down, and there you have that. And then you put the black plate down. And that's how you get four color printing. And these, these, this is the one from the actual cover. This is the one before they made all the corrections. And so it has the corrections on it. I redid it, redesigned it. And then they printed the final piece. Amazing. I, were you also nominated for two Grammy Awards for album cover design? Yeah, I got nominated twice. Uh, one of them was real fun. The artist wanted to do something different. So here you see him floating in a pool like that. And here's the cover. And let me see if I can turn it so there's no reflection. Do you notice anything strange? It's a hotel room with a girl sitting there. But it's full of water. The entire room is flooded. And he's floating in the ceiling with his head. See the cigarettes floating? Wow. So this guy had a great sense of humor. Uh, and often, honestly, you get to do nicer things for people that aren't as famous, because you get to try things that other people wouldn't do. Like in graphics, I always brought one layout that they asked for, or two. I did what's called an ABC formula. I did one or two of what they asked for, one or two that are a modification of what they asked for, and then C would be some crazy idea I had. <laughs> that was a crazy idea the artist and the illustrator for me came up with. And so you just do fun stuff. You had a thing you were showing me on how to conceptualize a, a picture and then oh, come up with yeah. different, sort of like what we were just discussing. I thought that might be fun to show to our audience. Yeah, a, a lot of people, especially in this day and era where we have such amazing cameras and computers, you think that, you know, like here's a piece of photographic reference. And you think, okay, I have to paint or draw that. No, this is your idea. This is, the, it's inspiring you. If you want a perfect photograph of it, shoot it with the camera. If you want to make it better, put it in Photoshop and I can do almost anything. But that's not the point. You're a storyteller. So what I try to encourage artists with, like here's a quick sketch of where you might take it. Modify it a little bit. There's a kind of a, a quick layout done in watercolor in a few minutes. Let me hold this up next to it so they can see, so where, you can see, see the, where we went. You know, I've simplified it. I made the village in the background. To show depth, I put a little, excuse me, a little boat back here going in the distance and then the hills and all. And the, so it's just one concept. But what I teach in a class is now do three or four different ideas. And they go, what do you mean? So here are three or four different ideas done from it. Same concept. So here I have a painting that could be divided into two canvases with the boats going back slowly in the distance away. And then here I have a nice scene. And then the one I like the best, it could be a graphic poster, is here. It could almost be done in just a couple of colors. Very graphic of the reflections in the water and all. All ideas from this reference. But you're starting to tell a story. And Good question. Are you, are you visualizing this in your imagination? What, what actually takes place in your mind, if you, could, if you could describe it, to go from this basic image to these other images? What's taking place that's moving you in those directions? It's a, great, it's a great idea. Again, it goes back to the storyteller idea. I'm looking at it. What excites me? Uh, here's some principles in art that are critical. Cameras show you everything. An artist's job is only to show you enough to tell a story. So they have to start thinking about a story. So when I saw those boats, the boat interested me, but it was cluttered. So what could I throw away that would interest me? And then I thought, if I was looking at that boat and sitting on a dock, where would the boat go? How far out in the water am I? I'm starting to tell myself a story. I, in a class, I teach it this way. If you were in an acting class and they gave you this script and it said, leave now, usually when we work in a studio, we'll have that read 16 different ways. So for example, one would be, leave now. <laughs> another would be, leave now. Another would be, leave now. Another would be, please leave now. Same words, different method. Same thing with art. You have to decide what's important to the story. And what people tend to do is they paint everything equal. So there's no story. Your job is to bring them in and make them think about something. So where are they supposed to look first? What's supposed to excite them? Uh, and, and that's part of your job as an artist, to be thinking and editing and, and remembering. Like I asked my students, they'll do this nice drawing. I said, what were you trying to tell me? <clears throat> I don't know. Trying to make it look like a photograph. OK, now you know the skills of copying, but what excited you about it? You know, like some people, I had a lady that I used to do work with, and she did amazing clowns, beautiful things, kind of confused and everything. She worked with me for a year or two, and all of a sudden, you started feeling like you knew the clown. Because she loved them so much, 
she stopped worrying about this detail and she went for the gesture of the hand or something like that. It's like if I do a portrait of somebody, I make them sit with me and talk to me for an hour. Like if I was doing your portrait, you have a great sense of humor. Thank you. And see, the other thing is, which side of your face looks better? People, the I side of the face. I have a face for radio, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I could, draw, I could draw a radio and just have your voice coming out of it. So you need to learn your subject. Uh, how do they use their hands? Do they do this? Uh, uh, do they look better in clothes? Do they look better standing up? All these things is part of your storytelling and then transferring it. Uh, and what I've told students is they don't realize. This is a two-dimensional surface. This way, right? Right. Any three-dimensional object I put on here, I have to abstract it by definition. So if I'm doing a portrait, I'm trying to get an abstraction of you or my subject and capture something special about it. I could shoot 10,000 photos. Well, here's an example. I did a little ad and they needed a kitty. People love this little kitty. You, you know, th there's the gesture. See how it's tilted? One paw in front of the other. Little tiny things that change the story. And that's part of your drawing. Or well, one of the, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say one of the things I know you're very good at is lighting and, and using lighting to create effects in your story. And I, I was hoping you might demonstrate a little about how, how an artist can change the effect of the impact of what their story is by using different strategies with lighting. Okay. The, the basic thing that happens, how he asked me originally, is you take a two-dimensional surface Okay, I've drawn a circle on a two-dimensional surface. How do I make, can you see that at all? Is it dark enough? How do I make that from a circle into a ball? The way you do it, I'll do this real fast and then I'll lift it up. The way I do it is I add light to it. Because what happened several hundred years ago, artists used to learn how to paint something. They'd learn how to paint a piece of fruit. And in every painting from then on, that piece of fruit would look the same. Then they learned not to paint. See, now it's got a shadow on it. It starts looking like a ball. Now I want it to sit on a table. So I now put the shadow that the ball is throwing on the table. And where's the light source coming from? There. That's where the light source is coming from. So. A couple hundred years ago, artists started learning to paint not something, but what light did on that something. And that starts to get realistic. And then you can start choosing, do I want more light, less light? What's important, light it up, what's not? The background used to all be the same even. So now I can make the background in shadow. Or I can paint, like somebody says, how do you do? The next part about light and shape is that we don't see in our brain detail. We see shapes. That's true. And so what you need to learn first as an artist is how to do shapes. It's a pretty fast person. Two eye sockets, a nose socket, a little bit of a lip, and a jawline. From there I can put detail. I can draw in the eye. I can give expressions. I can do more and more detail in the eye. I can start drawing hair. I can add. But if I don't get the basic shapes right, it doesn't do any good. In fact, they've proven scientifically, this is something that fits you, Howie, that eyebrows are the most important thing in recognizing somebody. Really? Yeah. Like if you look at my eyebrows, they're pretty extreme. If you took a photograph of me and retouched the eyebrows out, it would be hard to recognize me. And they took like 50 to 100 celebrities' photographs. See how oh. pronounced mine are? And they retouched Vulcan. the photographs. <laughs> yes. I am. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> uh, I knew Leonard. I met him. He's a neat man. He was a neat man. Uh, the eyebrows are so distinctive. And so there's a thing called the triangle, and it goes like this on somebody's face. If you get the eyes, eyebrow, and the nose right, you've got their likeness. The hair moves all the time. It doesn't matter. Even the lips change exposure. But if you don't get that triangle right, the person's no good. You haven't got a likeness. These are things that they used to know that you want to try to develop. And then you bring something different. Like, I wanted to do a quick painting of a dancer. I decided to put some color behind it just to give some action to it. Mm. She doesn't need it, but it kind of gives kind of drama and fire, because I think that's a fiery pose. Yes. It changes the entire mood. Yeah. 
So I could have left it white. I could have played it all black, like she's dancing in the night. I could have put a spotlight on her. I could have done all these different things. And that's my choice as an artist. How am I going to do that? And that's the story. That's back to the story. Okay. I did a nationally recognized one best nation for a promotion piece in the nation. A printer came to me and said, we want to do a brochure on our printing So you press. do commercial art as a business? I do commercial. I do graphics. I do things for portraits, companies, portraits. portraits. Uh, so they wanted a printing press, and I said, no. You're going to the entertainment industry. It's got to be something that looks different. So even like the technical thing, they wanted a T-square. I said, no, no, we're going to do it in the primary colors. Remember I told you how colors are printed in blue, black, red, and yellow? So I took the primary colors, black, yellow, blue, and red, and made this page. And everybody opened it and goes, wow, it's so different. But on the front, I did that. Beautiful. That's what won Best in the Nation Award. And they handed this out to people, and people stopped and wanted to look at it. I said, my job as an artist is to help people want to look at your stuff and use what's called the billboard principle. In, You've done that on postcards, too. Yep, and I'll explain the billboard principle and show you. The billboard principle is when you're driving down the highway, you get two to three seconds to see a billboard. So what's my job on a billboard? Something that draws your attention, and then tell me one thing. And then if you have enough time, tell me to do something. Yeah. In advertising, people often forget to tell you to do something. Yes. So you're interested, you're excited, and they don't tell you to call or mail or ship or something. But then it's also breaking the chain. So what he's mentioning is, my son is a dentist. And you know that dentists, every six months, send you out a card. And the card says, come get your teeth fixed or cleaned. And everybody goes, I don't want that card. I don't want it. And my son said, Dad, I, I can't get anybody to want my cards. And I said, I can get them to want them right away. In fact, I can get them to collect them. And he goes, no, you can't. I said, yes, I can. So we had a deal. We had a little debate, father and son debate. You've ever been through one of those, mm -hmm. right? You know, I can, you can't, I can, you can't. You don't know, I do know. So I said, I'll do it for you. So I made this card for him. And all the kids love it. The parents come in and collect them. And I did a whole series of these. Dogs and, and cats. Dogs, cats. I even had a bird. And people just love it, and they laugh, and they get it, and they stop being worried about getting my teeth clean, and it's just something fun. That's a good example of a commercial project. Exactly. You, you want to do something that people are interested, and you sell something about you that's good. Just like to say, some of you are watching, they have companies or businesses and you're looking for an incredible graphic artist, an award-winning, talented graphic artist, you should be considering calling Murray or using his email because you can't go wrong with someone with a track record like his. If he was good enough for Lucas, he's worked with Disney, he's worked with uh, some of the award-winning projects like the one you saw with this incredible face, it's definitely someone you want to look at for your own projects and your own business. He also does portraits. As well, and teaches. You have yes. classes. Yeah, I teach classes like this one up here is what I teach my class to start doing small sketches for fun. And when you travel, you can do a nice quick little watercolor somewhere. And then I recommend that they get a little postcard like this. You can buy these kits. Do a little postcard when you travel. Write a note to somebody. Say, hey, having a great time. The water made me think of you, whatever. Send it off to them. You get encouragement from them. They love the fact that they got to see a little something from you where you were, and you haven't invested your whole life on it. It's and you can pretty. just have a little book like this that just travels with you. That was done in Maui, just a little harbor I was sitting for a few minutes. And you've got an encouragement. You can buy a frame like this at Hobby Lobby or somewhere, put some of them in, change them as you get better, and just encourage people with your art. And if you encourage them, then they encourage you, and you grow. Amazing. As a storyteller. Wow. Do you have any other artwork that we could look at that would be one of the stories that you think would be of interest to the audience? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> I know you got a lot here. <laughs> well, it's just so you can go from anywhere. Here's very famous Siegfried and Roy. So that's a Las Vegas you did that? ad. Yeah. Nice. You know, so here was a great jazz guy that they wanted just a different look to. So I painted it so it had a different flavor to it. Wow. This is a great singer, Nicolette Larson, and so we did that, a little different look. Then Cool and the Gang, you guys have heard of them, so we did that fun cover for them. You know, Latoya Jackson, another kind of just nice portrait for her. 
So you just do something different in each case. You know, Tom Jones wanted to do a Western, so we did Tom Jones as a Western, you know. Are those pictures or paintings or? These are, most of them are photographs. There's Captain Tennille, you know. Then I did this for a company, and this is a painting that we did for a whole different look. So you can do different looks, different projects. I've done everything, album covers, movie posters, stuff for people that build tractors. It doesn't matter. It's just you want to tell a story for them that helps them and lets people see what they do. And you do portraits too, family portraits. Mm -hmm. You did one for the Rotary here for yeah. the inter new international president, John Germ. And yep. We're very, very pleased with that. Thank you. If you're watching, please put Murray's contact information up. If you'd like a portrait done of your family or if you'd like him to help you come up with an incredible breakthrough idea for your business, or you'd be interested in lessons, he teaches. He's an amazing teacher. He's very gifted. I, he's, he's, he doesn't think he's brilliant. He's brilliant. You saw what he did. I mean, how many people do you know could show you so many amazing things in such a short time? I'm just blown away by what you do and how well you do and how modest you are about your talent. Please, copy down his information. Get in touch with him. He could help you with your business to make your business brand stand out. He could help you with your family. Speaking of helping families, if you please put my contact information up. I'm here also to help your family with learning. I could help you to read and write and remember. If you go to hbspeedreading.com, you'll find all my programs on reading, writing, memory, and math. You'll also be able to uh, contact me at Mr. Reader at msn.com. If you have a question about anything in learning you'd like me to answer on the show, if you would like to talk to me and do a free consultation, no charge, 214-952-9150. Maybe you have a youngster getting ready to go to college or having some difficulty in one of their classes in school and you want to know what can you do to help them, 214-952-9150, give me a call. That's my home, that's my cell phone. Not an assistant. I'll talk to you and I'll make sure that I give you the answer that you're looking for. So remember the hbspeedreading.com or 214-952-9150. Well, it looks like we're getting close to the end of another show. This was really exciting. I can't tell you how delighted I am to have Murray as a guest on today's show. He just He's only shown you a small piece of what he's got in his home. It's just it's like an art museum. I always love going there. Well, until next time, this is Howard Berg, the world's fastest reader, wishing you and yours the best of success. Remember to get in touch with me with any questions you have about learning, and you can get in touch with Murray to have incredible artwork done for yourselves, for your families, for your business. You can't go wrong with someone who's been nominated for two Grammy Awards. And until next time, I want to wish you and yours the best of success. Thank you for tuning in. The truth sets you free. With the world's fastest reader, Howard Stevenberg.